to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our coverage of HFES 2018. My name is Nick Rome. I'm joined by Blake Arnsdorf. We're also joined today by Doug Mitchell, the founder of and director of Next Generation Radio from NPR, who's also the moderator for the diversity panel that just happened. Uh, Doug, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me on. So today we're going to be talking about sort of your Next Generation Radio project. Is that is that kind of what it's called? Or yes, exactly. That's exactly it's what exactly it's called. It's exactly that. Next yeah. Generation Radio project and yeah. kind of how it relates to human factors and, and uh, what we can take away from it. So what is it? Well, the program started or I started 18 years ago and I it was a solution to what I consider a, there's a couple of problems that we have one is recruitment uh, and the other is retention and particularly for people of color in our system journalists of color in our system um, my started NPR I just walked in the building uh, that's not a good recruitment tr- um, <laughs> strategy right. I think uh, so I thought we, we needed to have some kind of consistent model through which we can identify talent we can train them. Uh, it's under duress because <laughs> you know media is under duress yeah, in a lot of different yeah, ways. No yeah. kidding. Um, and we could identify people that we wanted to to bring in. Um, so the model is, uh, for example, we're going to have a project coming up in Sacramento, California, uh, in a couple of weeks. We just picked our six students for the program. I have six professional journalists who will work with them one to one during the course of the week. We'll have some sort of editorial theme. We'll look for certain kinds of stories. Uh, it'll be what we call non-narrated stories. So on NPR, uh, there's a program called StoryCorps, where if you turn on, I think it's Friday mornings, uh, during our show Morning Edition, our national program, uh, Morning Edition, uh, it's a three and a half minute segment where they found somebody who has a great story to tell and they let them tell it. So you don't have the reporter in it. So through this way, we, I figured that a lot of students are getting uh, traditional training by whether they're standing in front of TV cameras or working on microphones, but they're inserting themselves into the story as a reporter, feeling like you're facilitating the delivery of information. What I did was took the reporter out and you have to go find somebody who, you, again, they have to be a strong character, but you only have three and a half minutes for that person to tell that story. And it's really difficult. That yeah, sounds, yeah, we're kind of mean. <laughs> I mean, that has to like develop a lot of great skills in people to become better reporters ultimately. Because exactly. you have to be searching for talent. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, and that's what, um, you know, as it relates to this conference, uh, I sort of realized that uh, I'd never heard of HFES until uh, Kermit um, uh, contacted me, Kermit Davis contacted me. So I did some research and I thought, oh, so I have a system. I understand how that works. And we're training. Okay, so that's a human factor. Right, yeah. Uh, we're trying to develop people, and we're also mentoring because they actually have someone in which who can, they can come to, in, usually in times of duress, unfortunately. I call that the hair on fire moment. Um, <laughs> you know, it's more transactional, but what we really want to do is create a community of people, and I think we have, uh, who are interested in what we do, the content that we create in the way that public media here in the U.S. does it, um, and they stay in. Can I ask, so you mentioned that media is under duress, and it is. Yeah. Um, is, have you noticed sort of a lack of uh, interest from younger folks that are trying to break into the media field um, just because of all the negative attention it's been getting? I think that kind of started before 2016. I think what you have, so I'm old enough to remember when podcasting first started back in the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, it didn't last because we didn't have smartphones because you couldn't take it with you. You had to put it on a, an MP3 to player, you had to download it, we didn't, and it was, you, broadband wasn't universal then. And then it, when the smartphone developed, and then you saw people with the earbuds and, and they're on their phones walking around, oblivious to pretty much anything else that's going on around them. I don't know how safe that is. Um, then podcasting came back and really started taking off. And so what I think has happened is that I think younger people are more interested in having control over the content. You want more control over what you listen to. You want to be creators yourselves. Um, the unfortunate part about podcasting is that there's a million, you know, millions of them. Yeah. Everybody's kind of doing the same thing. Uh, there's some podcasts, like you've got guys at universities who are, and there are guys uh, talking sports for an hour and a half, you know, right, on a podcast. 
You know, who wants to listen to that except their three other friends? So there's, right. there, there should be more of a qualitative assessment. But to get back to your original question, I think, yes, I think there's, there's I wouldn't say there's less interest in journalism. I think what they're a lot interested in is the news okay. in, the way, in, the, in the way that the news is being presented today. Sure. And it almost seems like there's this war on facts now. And I, I wonder if that's part of it, too, right? If I don't, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's, um, I don't, from where I sit, I'm not, uh, like I work for NPR, we don't traffic in uh, hearsay, gossip. Right. We check, 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 and check again. And if someone decides they don't like something, then they don't like it. Right. You know, so I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not that concerned about it. Okay. Uh, I, I think, again, part of it is the decentralization of media. Uh, anybody can do anything at any time. Uh, people have learned how to Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> very, very well. You might yeah, yeah, yes, yes. If you, I mean, all you have to do is have rudimentary skills in Photoshop to put out, to put out whatever you want to put out. My concern is the, um, because there's so much of it, how do you decipher what is what? That, to me, is, my biggest, is the biggest concern. Right. Do you have something? I just think that's a major concern with a lot of people, right? Like, you have to almost use your critical mind just to look at things you're seeing on television that should, at some point, maybe have just been very black and white when it comes to the news, or even when it comes to ads that you're seeing, you almost have to dive down and understand every nuance and whether you're getting the truth or not. And I don't know whether people are taking the time to do that. I don't because it does take time. I literally, I don't think people have time. I mean, with the kind of jobs that most people work, the nine right. to five schedule, you go home and you're dead tired. And it's, and it's too easy to not do that. Sure. Right. Yeah. It's and easy you can create your own echo chamber. Yeah. You create your own echo chamber. You get on social media and you can block or tackle or whatever you want keep them out of your feed and you don't have to see anything you don't disagree with or in some cases in a lot of cases actually you're not around anybody who's different from you yeah and that's a problem right. too so i want to get back to sort of the mentorship um and training that you are doing in in your next generation radio program i'm curious is there some sort of curriculum that mentors and mentees follow or is it kind of very based on the uh relationship that they have together so the general process that we have is once, so I'm the fundraiser also, so that's another skill set that I <laughs> never expected to have to, sure, you know, sure. journalism, I don't raise money, um, but I have to do that now. Uh, and once the relationship is settled, we settle on a date that we're actually doing the camp. So for example, again, we have another one, we have one coming up in Sacramento, and it's with our station, Capital Public Radio in Sacramento. The money has been secured. Uh, the station, myself, and everybody involved gets on social media, and we're taking students from Northern California and across Oregon as well. Blast, blast, blast on social media. We have them apply through our website. Uh, last week, my managing editor and I went through the applications and picked out our six students. Um, I've already chosen the team because I give everybody about two months' notice, and I have a spreadsheet for all of this. Right. Another thing, I, another skill set I never expected to have to develop. Uh, and I keep track of how many projects, who said they could possibly do it. I give them two months' notice, uh, select them. Then we have travel arrangements to make, hotel arrangements to make. Um, everybody gets to this. We show up on a Sunday. Sunday, after, Sunday evening, we all have dinner together. It's very casual. And then on Monday, we begin the process of creating stories. And we've all had a couple of meetings to decide on the editorial direction of the, you know, what's our theme that week. And then they go out and they do their reporting. So it's not a class. Right. We don't really have, the syllabus is the previous work that we've done. So we always want to do a little bit of study before you, sure, sure. you know, don't show up at, you know, I mean, you shouldn't come to class without having read the syllabus. A lot of people do. <laughs> I would say that's true. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just as guilty back in the day. But we want it to be a digital first newsroom where you have visual, you have audio, you have stills. Uh, and now we have illustrations all working together as a unit to create our websites and the, and the, and the program that we have. That's very cool. Do you, do you have any specific success stories where um, potentially someone's gone on and, and has been very reputable because of this program? Or? Well, I always start with my, one of my more famous um, uh, mentees who is the co-host of All Things Considered at NPR. Her name is Audie Cornish. She was a student in our project back in 2000. Um, there's another Celeste Headley. She is, uh, uh, was host of The Takeaway at WNYC in New York. 
She had her own show at Georgia Public Broadcasting. Now she is a speaker. She did a TED Talk, had 12 million hits. 12 million. That's, that's uh, a lot. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. Uh, <laughs> she's now doing, she's on speaking tours around the country. She was a student in the program way back when. And I have others, too, who are sprinkled throughout public media. The most recent just got a job as a reporter at our station in Salt Lake City. Oh, and man. she called me and said, they offered me a salary. What do I do with that? And I said, you, you need to negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> and so I walked, helped her walk through that. So I've got, uh, because I've been doing it for so long, there are people sprinkled everywhere. And I do keep track of, of, of who's where. And they always, you know, I feel like we do such a, it's such a family type uh, sure. atmosphere that they feel comfortable. I have a problem. Can I talk to you about it? Right. So, uh, oh, go ahead, Blake. Sorry. Well, I just thought it was awesome. Like, it sounded like that from like your most recent student, she got herself a job and was reaching out to you yep. for like, how do I even handle the situation of negotiating right. salary? So that's great that it lasts beyond just the camp itself. And that's the point. And that's kind of the point. Yeah. The, I, I used to use this phrase, um, the mentoring starts when the project stops. Because once you've done the work and you've sort of proven yourself, you kind of go, now what? Right. You know, imagine going to uh, when you're in school and you go to class and you get your grade and then you just move on to whatever the next thing is. But we all have that one professor or two or a teacher in high school who sort of stayed with you and pushed you as you went along. And we, we want to we be those people, too. Well, this sounds like an excellent opportunity for some young folks if they're interested in radio. Where can some of our listeners go and find uh, resources or to find out more about the project? So if they start at our website, it's nextgenerationradio.org, nextgenerationradio.org. Uh, we have current projects, previous projects are there. And I would also say, just because it says radio doesn't mean it's really radio. What we're doing is media. And so if you look on our sites, you have to write an 800-word story. You have to write a 300-word reflection. You have to take pictures. You have to do a stand-up. You know, we call explainer video to explain as a like a host introduction, but you do it on video and you have to talk to a camera. We do all those things in a four and a half day period. And so when you come out of it, you'll have an understanding of where I think a lot of media is moving if they're not there already. That's excellent. You're also on social media yep. all over the place. Yes. It's, uh, I, I talked to a social media marketing person once. He said, oh, you need to have consistent branding. I thought, oh, okay. So we're at Next Gen Radio on Instagram, at Next Generation Radio on Twitter, and we have a Facebook page, Next Generation Radio. Excellent. Well, Doug Mitchell, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate you stopping by and talking about your uh, project over there at Next Generation Radio. Um, So we like to sign off the show by saying it depends because in human factors, everything kind of depends on the person. So we'll count down and uh, we'll call what? It depends. It depends. It depends. So three, two, one. It, it depends. depends.